For the past several weeks, campaigns, big and small, from across the country have been focused on four little letters, GOTV, get out the vote. Everything from the ads inundating the airwaves to the flyers flooding your mailbox is aimed at compelling you to the polls. This year, nearly half a million Massachusetts residents also received a report card comparing their voting record to their neighbors. The mailers were sent by the Washington-based group America Votes, which points to research out of Harvard showing people are motivated to cast a ballot if they think their neighbors vote more than they do. My next guest study political behavior. Ryan Enos is an assistant professor of government at Harvard, and Nick Beecham is an assistant professor at Northeastern University. Welcome to both of you. I'm interested in this voter survey, but first, I'm really tired of this cliche that the voters are angry and throw the bums at them. I mean, we've heard this ever since 1994 when there was that big sea change in Congress. It's such a cliche. I mean, is it true? It doesn't feel that true this time. I don't think it's any more true now than it has been ever, just just as you said. I mean, it, it seems like it's a cliche. And as we know, you know, people vote for a lot of different reasons, but just being angry is probably not the probably not the mm. major one of them. And people are going to go vote how they're going to vote, and it's not because they want to throw bums out. Yeah, because you hear that analysis over and oh, over sure. again. Yeah. All right, so, um, Nick, on the issue of being compared to your neighbors, I mean, I get these notices from NSTAR, too, telling me how I'm doing <laughs> with my energy use. Is it really a motivation? Would I turn my heat down if I thought my neighbor was you know sleeping colder than me. What's remarkable is how widely these sorts of strategies for getting out the vote yeah. have spread since the research. The research was only done a few years ago, and uh, even in the last two years, the the breadth of the uh, different campaigns that are using these strategies to get out the vote has really been kind of remarkable. It's in a dozen different states, mm -hmm. as far as I know now. Um, so certainly the campaigns themselves think it works. The this research is, seems to suggest that the it voter works report also, card that the yeah. voter and, report and what's cards, the psych psychology behind it? Well, that's sort of a harder question, right? Is it a matter of shame that you know, you're worried about your neighbors knowing that you don't vote? Is it a matter of pride in sort of advertising to your neighbors that you do vote? Is it some combination of these two things? It certainly seems to be a pure effect one way or the other that you're sort of interested in your, the group of people that you respect or that uh, you feel that you know, they are judging you or might be judging you. Um, I think a lot of the things that affect um, turnout have to do with sort of peer effects and group effects. Um, and this definitely seems to be one that's leveraging that. What's remarkable about this is that the treatment is you know, very slight. It's just one mailer or maybe the same mailer sent to you a few times <laughs> yeah. um, to make sure that yeah. you see it. But e even so, from the political science point of view, getting any mm -hmm. measurable effect that's at all from something in the mail is really remarkable. So, Ryan, on the bigger scope of things, with uh, Republicans poised to take both the Senate and they've already got the House, there's been a lot of discussion about how the tone of the conversation has changed because if you just go by kind of conventional wisdom, a lot of things that Republicans believe or policy issues anyway would turn off certain groups, you know, millennials and Latinos and all that kind of thing. But do you agree with that, that the tone of conversation about immigration or same-sex marriage or abortion or whatever, has, has that made a difference? Well. I think that it's clear that issues such as same-sex marriage and abortion, especially in places like Massachusetts, that Republicans are little, maybe the Republicans in Congress are a little out of step with Yeah, the it doesn't count here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't count here, but especially, you know, in the yeah. country at large, we can see there's been a shift on things, and Repu Republicans aren't running on those issues. Mm -hmm. Republicans are running like people often do in the midterm against a president that's been mm -hmm. there for six years, and when you're somebody there for six years, you have a big chance to have a lot of unpopular things build up, and and in that sense, you know, Republicans are running, are running against that, and and that the tone of the conversation in this election is like it is in a lot of midterm elections, was just, just let's run against a president that's had a big opportunity to have a lot of negative, negative things build up about him. And has, has that been effective? It, well, it so seems, to the point where people would accept somebody who had a completely different ideological base than themselves. It, it, it isn't necessarily any more effective than, than it usually is. It, it seems that not that many voters actually vote on things like same-sex marriage or immigration or something like that. You know, voters are, are motivated by a lot of pretty basic mm -hmm. things. It seems like they're going to vote, if they're Republican, they're going to vote for Republican. If they're Democrat, they're going to vote for a Democrat. And then some are going to move around because of things like maybe how the economy is doing or whether they're just tired of the same president in office. And that's, and that's probably what we're seeing here is people are going to vote against a sitting president and 
Republican voters turn out a little bit more in the midterms, and so that's going to lead to Republicans mm -hmm. picking up some seats. Going back, uh, Nick, to what motivates voters to vote, I don't have statewide tallies, but the last one I checked for the city of Boston, it was 22 percent of almost 90,000 eligible voters, and it, it, it can't go that much higher. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not going to double by, by the time polls close. What motivates somebody? People are much more motivated, obviously, in a presidential year, but you know, and this is a gubernatorial year, among other things. I mean, where, 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 what, what's the biggest motivation other than the report card? Yeah, I think there are a lot of things that play much larger roles. But what's interesting is that from the point of view of political science, you know, what causes people to vote is something that's still very much up in the air. I think we have a better sense of what causes people not to vote yeah. than what causes them to vote. So we've you know, got various data on, you know, who, what sort of reasons people cite for not voting. So um, the, the latest polls I was looking at were suggesting that, you know, maybe 25 or 30 percent vote out of disinterest or disliking the candidates, and maybe another 40 or 50 percent don't vote based on sort of logistical problems. Um, now, whether those are real logistical problems or whether that's just sort of their rationalization for why they don't mm -hmm. want to go vote uh, is a little bit harder to say. Um, but certainly one of the things that does, getting back to my earlier point, seem to play a large role uh, is you know the, the sense of uh, social conformity or mm -hmm. something. So the other thing that we know that gets out the vote is this door-to-door, -door, yep. uh, you know, on the ground campaign. And I think in some ways that's kind of similar to what's going on with the mm -hmm. cards, and that it's sort of giving you this interpersonal interaction with somebody. You're actually seeing mm -hmm. that you believe knows what you're going to do and might sort of come back and call you on it or something. Still, so. still worries me that people are winging it when they get in there. I got in there and got dizzy mm -hmm. reading those questions today. You know. <laughs> Sure. It was a lot of information. You know, you're it's asked to vote much. in all these different things. I could have rewritten things. those. Yeah, sure. Well, we understand that well, though, too. A lot of voters don't know what's going on when they go into that poll, and that's why they, they rely on things like, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, and that's how I'm going to vote. But those questions, those can, that's a lot of text. That can be pretty confusing. Although right. there's some suggestion that those things actually do motivate people to come out, yeah. that these are sort of interesting issues yeah. in a way Absolutely. that seeing the same are. candidates Even again if they are complicated. is not going to be quite as all motivating. Right. Nick Beecham and Ryan Enos, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.